Hi, I'm Chris Marshall, field editor of Woodworkers Journal magazine. You know, miter saws are one of those great crossover tools from the construction industry. And if you're like me, I'm using my miter saw on virtually every project I build. Whether I'm bringing long stock into the shop and cutting it down to length, or making more precise cuts from everything from figure, uh, face frames to picture frames, it's a saw that I'm going back to again and again. But the thing about a miter saw is, in order to really maximize its value, you need some support tables next to it on at least one side, if not on two, to be able to work with that longer stock safely. And once you've made those cuts, cutting something into smaller and smaller pieces, you need a place to store those offcuts. So for me, the combination of those two issues spells project. And that's exactly what I'm planning to bring to you in the June 2010 print issue of Woodworker's Journal. I am building a full-size miter saw station. This is an eight-foot long project, two feet deep. It's a big project, but it's not a complex project to build. It's mostly butt joints, biscuit joints, and pocket screw joints. So it's very accessible, but it will take you some time to build it. I think there are some features on this project that you won't find in other miter saw stations that I'm really excited about. So I'd like to show those to you. The first feature that I like quite a lot is that on a miter saw, typically, if you don't back up the cut, you'll get a lot of tear out against the standard fences on the saw. On this project, I've actually designed it with a platform in the center that moves the saw back and forth so that you can push the saw back from the fences to put a backer board in place, screw it in place and leave it there and still have the saw be even with those fences. When you need to make a deep bevel cut, you can loosen up two knobs, pull the entire platform forward and that'll give you clearance for your standard fences for tipping the saw on its side. Very useful for zero clearance cuts. And I think those are just what we want to do as woodworkers. Speaking of fences, I've incorporated Craig's Precision Track System, that's the blue anodized aluminum rails on top, with Craig's Flip Stop System. So I've got repetitive cross cuts that are easy to make on this project. The fences, as I said, are fixed in place and the saw moves back and forth. Now, dust collection is another issue for miter saws. If you use a bag on your saw, you'll get quite a bit of the dust, but not nearly as much as if you hook your saw up to a shop vac. Well, on this project, I've actually incorporated my shop vacuum right into the design. The hose runs up through the back of the project. It's always locked into my saw, so I get that vacuum assist every time I turn it on. And Rockler sells a product that's very handy, and I've incorporated that in here as well. I've got an electrical receptacle that's mounted right on the wall of the cabinet and a switch plugged into it that allows the saw to activate the shop vacuum and then keep it running for about 10 seconds afterward to clear the rest of the dust. It's really helpful. Aside from that level of dust collection though, you're still going to get some residual dust that even the vacuum won't collect. And on this project, behind the platform, I've actually designed a trough that collects that extra dust and draws it through a four inch hole on the, in back of the cabinet here through a dust port on the end. So you can hook up your four inch dust collector hose with a blast gate and draw the extra dust out whenever you need to do that, whatever the uh, shop vacuum doesn't collect. In terms of storage space here, I've got five fixed shelves for storing stock up to about 24 to 26 inches. And for those smaller offcuts you just can't part with, I've built into mine a couple of pull-out bins for storing those smaller pieces. These aren't actually drawers, they just pull right out of the project so I can take them to my bench or to the lathe for turning those pens. Very handy to, to be able to organize that. We've also put this project on casters, outside corner casters lock. So whenever you need to move the project around to another spot in the shop, it's real easy to do. So between dust collection, three foot long support uh, tables on either side of the saw, a precision stop system, and, uh, and, and the ability to support really any stock that comes into the shop, I think this is gonna be a real handy project. Uh, it was fun to build and I hope it will be for you too. So 
Look for it coming your way in the June 2010 issue of the magazine. And until then, happy woodworking.